It is generally a good idea to work every muzzle from a couple different angles. Hey everybody, I thought I would chat with you guys and gals a little bit about this today. Um, now this is something that people who've been training a long time usually realize, uh, even in spite of minimalist uh, things that are out there. And I want to be clear, people can absolutely do minimalism and still get pretty good results. Uh, in fact, we could make the case for uh, training minimalism being able to give people possibly up to 90% of their potential gains uh, while spending very, very little time in the gym. So uh, I, there are definitely demographics of people who do well on training minimalism. Uh, you know, people who really and truly only have 30, 40 minutes, three times a week to hit the gym. Uh, it does make sense to very much limit total volume, total exercise selection, and just focus on the most uh, efficient movements in that case. And so again, I do want to be clear there there is a case for that and I'm not saying a person can't get pretty good results really only doing five or six exercises it can absolutely be done however if our goal is to really develop uh, you know most of the muscles of our body we, we actually do need to hit things from multiple angles and I think just in the background of this you guys will see me doing three types of presses and um, you know a tricep extension and, and we could use these as examples of the different heads of muscles being worked. Uh, but I'm also going to chat with you guys a little bit about kind of what the evidence uh, is regarding the, these ideas, okay? Because we have quite a few different uh, studies in this and basic physiology that would explain why there's benefits to this. You know, because people will say, well, there's not really these parts of muscle only has, uh, you know, sometimes one function. And while that may be true, different parts in terms of like proximal and distal muscle fibers can be recruited to a greater or lesser extent and you will get muscle fibers that do not get uh, fully recruited sometimes with with specific movement patterns in that muscle and so yes you may be leaving gains on the table okay so we need to we need to be clear on that so i mean perfect example here you guys see me doing a flat bench an incline bench and a red press and uh, like an incline tricep extension so when we look at that what are what are we seeing uh, you know, obviously this is pec, front part of the delts and triceps. But when you start looking at what's being hit and you look at the, you know, the evidence for this, you know, the flat bench is a great overall chest builder, right? It works the bottom, the middle, the upper chest. And yes, people who say it doesn't work the upper chest clearly haven't looked at the research. People who claim it doesn't build a big chest don't know how to bench. They simply do not know how to bench. And their level of experience is irrelevant because there are pro bodybuilders out there who say, I can't ever feel the bench in my, my chest and I use another movement. And then you watch them try to bench press. And it's like, well, yeah, nobody would feel the bench press in their chest the way you're doing it. You don't know how to actually perform the exercise. You know, being a pro bodybuilder doesn't mean that you actually know how to do every movement. Uh, in fact, many of them don't know as much as you would think. Uh, some of them know a great deal, right? But uh, that, this is a perfect example, bench press. Well, the incline bench, when you look at it, what does it do? What works the upper chest more, okay? And we need to be clear that it creates a deeper stretch on the pec. So definitely for the upper pec, maybe not always for the lower pectorals, but we get into a deeper lengthened position, okay? So it will absolutely bias towards upper chest development. Again, we have data on this in the lab, okay? Not only do people feel it more, right? It's been confirmed in, in labs. We can see why they feel it more because it activates it more. Uh, funny how that works. Funny how that works. How often do we see that in studies to where bodybuilders say, well, I feel my upper chest a lot more. I feel my lower bicep a lot more on this movement. You hook it up in a lab to an EMG and lo and behold, equipment measures higher activity, electromagnetic activity in the areas where they're feeling it more. Well, maybe, maybe they were onto something. Uh, <laughs> funny how that happens. So, not necessarily a bad thing, not saying your body can't lie and how you feel is always correct. But, you know, with stuff like that, it sometimes is pretty, pretty accurate. So you have that. So then it's obviously going to work 
the uh, upper chest more. And it's also going to be enough of a different angle that you're going to have some unique fibers. Uh, then you throw in an overhead press. Well, a little more uh, total shoulder, a little less chest, but a lot of the overlap is there. But again, a different movement pattern, different fibers in the shoulders are going to be hit. Okay, that gets a really good combination. Um, a lot of people, they're really trying to develop the upper chest and delts. Uh, doing both an incline and an overhead press does make sense throughout their training week. Okay, makes absolute sense. All right, but then you see me in there doing a tricep extension. Well, people would say, well, don't the presses hit triceps? Yes, absolutely. Back bench press is pretty good tricep builder in the lab, but not the entire tricep. Mostly the lateral head. Extensions like I did there hit the long head harder. Okay, so what do we have then? All that pressing, then you throw that in. Now we're hitting different heads of the tricep. And that's been confirmed in the lab. Right? When only bench press is done, lateral head grows the most. When only extensions like this are done or they're close enough types, uh, the long head gets more growth. In studies where both were worked, the whole tricep grows more. Which kind of then brings us to the latter point. We have quite a few studies that compare different movement patterns to see if this is really true, right? Do we get more total growth in the muscle if we hit the two movement patterns? Oftentimes it looks like that's the case, right? How many bodybuilders have noted that over the decades? You're like, oh, I get, if I work this muscle from a couple different angles, I tend to grow a little faster, at least from what they can tell in their observations. Well, we found it in the lab that there's truth to that especially if it works different functions of a muscle, okay? We've seen the same thing in some studies that looked at taking the same amount of training volume, so working just as hard, just as many reps, just as many sets of doing more than one exercise versus only one exercise. What do we find? Uh, usually doing two to three exercises, even doing the same total amount of work, usually produces a little more muscle growth. Now keep in mind, this is for the same amount of effort and time and work. Right? If you're going to do 10 sets per week, spreading it out over two to three exercises usually seems to cause more growth. And it makes sense when we look at the studies that show activation or even muscle growth, it's more regional in a muscle. Right? Some exercises seem to work a lower or upper part of a muscle more, even on something like a bicep. So it would make sense that combining them together gives a, a greater overall benefit. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I'll talk to you guys and gals next time.